If we define meditation as where you get acquainted with your mind by getting, letting all the extraneous thoughts go, stop your analysis, and get acquainted with your consciousness, well then I'd say, yes, meditation is the way to go. But you know, there's a hundred ways to do that. So you don't have to sit with your legs crossed and go aum in order to get there. There's all kinds of other things that you can do. You know, we think of that as meditation. But uh, there is no way other than going through your consciousness. You have to experience and explore your own consciousness. That's the only door open to you. So that's kind of a yes and, yes and no to your question. Yes. You keep talking about growing up, and I think we can probably understand what you mean. As more people grow up or reduce their entropy, does that mean that, because a lot of people talk about the more that, more that some people grow up and do that, the more it encourages others to yes. do that by osmosis, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I personally have experienced, and lots of my friends have experienced, completely on their own have started to find a path with nobody else guiding them. And they wonder why. And it seems to be happening to more and more people. So is that explainable in your... Yes. Um, you know, there's, there's a thing called group consciousness, and we all tend to kind of grow up together. And where you have a lot of energy, a lot of grown or, or lower entropy energy, um, that is encouraging just on its own. You tend to, you know, it's like mob psychology is the opposite of that. You know, you've got a bunch of people together acting badly. Well, they all act worse than any of them would act you know, on their own. The same thing happens the other way. You've got a bunch of people acting good. You know, if you've got a bunch of people who are loving together, then that just feeds on itself. It's kind of a, a group, group mind. We are all communicating with each other all the time by telepathy. The data is going back and forth all the time. We call it sometimes vibes, you know, oh, I got bad vibes from that person. Well, or I really like them, you know, or I really don't like them. The reason we get that is we're exchanging information all the time with people. And when you exchange information with people who have low entropy consciousness, you get that nice feeling back at somebody you want to be around, somebody you like, and it kind of encourages you to do that. And also, the other thing is that you get, people have to be ready to do this. If you're not ready, it just doesn't connect. You kind of listen to all this and you go, eh, you know, and, and do something else. You're just not ready. People who kind of like each other and hang out with each other often tend to be at about the same level of readiness for this. So when something happens, it kind of happens all over. So you're talking to the hundredth monkey. Hmm? Hundredth monkey. Yes, the hundredth monkey. It just, it just happens. There was a question back here. Um, what are you saying at the, at the beginning about the photon? I've seen this like, where you where it's been recorded going through the two um, slots. Well, how do you know that it went through both slots if you stopped watching it and recording it? The way it goes through both slots is that it produces an interference pattern that of light. You have you have when light goes through two slits, you can think of the light emanating from both slits and it interferes with itself. When it interferes with itself, where you have wavelengths that are at peaks and two peaks interact, then you get an even bigger peak. And where you have you know, a peak and a dip, you get nothing because they cancel each other out. So you get this characteristic wave pattern on the screen. You don't get one dot of light. You get a whole bunch of dots of light. The biggest one is in the center. Then there's two out from that that are a little dimmer, two out from that that are a little dimmer, and so on that it, that it goes. So you get this characteristic wave pattern. That's why there's this wave-particle duality. Physicists looked at that and they saw the pattern and they knew it was a wave. Light's a wave. And then when they look at it as a particle and it goes through one hole or the other, then they know it's a particle. And the big problem was, how can it be a wave and a particle at the same time? That was the, that was the issue. So that's how you can tell. It, it produces a, a wave pattern. Basically what it means is that the looking at it is a, is a shorthand for you take a measurement. Okay? You somehow measure what hole it goes through, and you measure the, the interference pattern on the, on the back screen. So that's how that's done. Yes, ma'am. I think you said that you can vision a probable future of past reality. Mm -hmm. But how, how do you know that you've been in that reality if you can't really test that data? You can't be imagining it. Yes. If it's you something have, well, that never happened. Yes, you cannot well. test everything. And we do the same thing that other scientists do. You know, when they came up with a with the idea that, that an atom, uh, Rutherford, 
did some experiments that showed that uh, an atom had a positive charge at its center. Before that, they thought the charge was just scattered all through it. Well, they tested some atoms, and, and that seemed to be true, but they didn't feel the necessity to test every atom. This is kind of the same thing. Once you learn some, some things, you get some basic facts, and you say that you know, this kind of reality frame is this way, you know, that's that, and you get evidence, you understand what you're doing, then you can assume that other things that work the same way you know, are the same way. So you kind of extrapolate some knowledge to a greater knowledge. Now there's some error in that. You know, maybe Rutherford should have measured every atom, but that's impractical, and you can't, me you can't get data on every experience. But you can get enough data so that you have confidence in what you're experiencing and what the reality of it is. You get into these other reality frames, and if you don't know that that's the probable future or that's the improbable past, then you're lost. You just see it's a, you know, you don't know what it means. You're just wandering around in that, uh, and you have no idea. There's not a big sign that says, you know, probable reality this way. You know, you have to do enough experimentation that you know where you're going and what you're doing. It has to do with your intent. If your intent is very clear, then the data you get will be very clear. If your intent is foggy. On you or others. Pardon? Is there any danger on, on you or other people when you do this? In, in general, in, in general, I would tell you no. Go ahead and, and just experiment and do whatever it is you can do and don't be fearful about the dangers. Um, that's what I would say in general. In fact, that's not entirely true, but it's mostly true. At the level at which most people interact and the area in which they can interact in, um, there is a remote chance of you getting into some kind of dangerous situation. It's not zero, but it's remote. It's like you take a walk in a park. You walk across the park that's over here across the street, and what's the probability that somebody's going to jump out behind a bush and knock you over the head? Well, it's not zero, but it's pretty low, particularly if it's noontime in the middle of the day. It's very low, but it might happen. It could happen. There could be some deranged person there who would jump out and knock you over the head. Just your unlucky day, you happen to be there at the same time that that deranged person was. So this is kind of like that. There are things that can happen. There's a lot of entities out there. Many of them are not nice. But there's also rules. The non-physical is a virtual reality as well and has rules. And for the most part, you're safe. But like everywhere, you know, all entities don't always obey the rules. You know, some of them disobey the rules, and things can happen that aren't nice. There are people who have problems impacting their life here that has to do with interactions that they have uh, non-physically, things that they've had happen and, and from the past. It happens. But it's not a high enough probability to worry about. Just go on your own way and deal with what you have to deal with when you get there. Otherwise, your fear will block your progress. If you're afraid of it, you won't get very far. You have to be fearless or you won't be able to do this. And because you have to be fearless, one of the tests, one of the things you'll run into, particularly if you get in the out-of-body reality and that uh, astral plane, you know, boogeymen will jump out at you. You know, you will find your own fears. You create your own fears. And when you get in that reality, what you think is what you create. And if you're carrying fear around with you, that will manifest itself into something you'll have to deal with. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're in danger. It just may scare you half to death. But you're still going to come back. You'll still be breathing and everything will be all right. So I'm not saying there won't be things that won't scare you or frighten you. But if you're not fearless, then your trips will be short and you won't get real far. You have to be willing to take whatever comes, however it is. So when you're doing an out-of-body...